You are listening to a MIDI file being played in FluidSynth using General User GS version 2. In this video, I will show you how to set up FluidSynth in Windows to play MIDI files just by double-clicking them. If you are using macOS or Linux, I have created a version of this tutorial for you. Links are in the video description. FluidSynth currently provides the best MIDI playback you can get on Windows, at least in my opinion. Don't be put off by the use of a terminal window, it's actually quite easy to use once you get it set up. If you'd rather have a MIDI playback application with a graphical user interface and playback controls, check out my other video on setting up SoundFont MIDI Player by Falcosoft. A link to that video will be in the description below. Now on to the tutorial. First of all, you will need a general MIDI sound font to be able to render the instrument sounds in your MIDI files. For this tutorial, we will be using my new General User GS release, version 2.0. To download, open a browser and go to www.schristiancollins.com slash general user. Scroll down to download and then click the link here to download the current version. Note that this will say version 2.0.0 or later by the time you're watching this video. Open Windows Explorer and go to Downloads or wherever you downloaded the file. Right click and select Extract All. Make sure to uncheck Show Extracted Files when complete, then click Extract. Now you can delete the zip file. And now let's move this general user GS folder into a more permanent location. I usually like to put all of my virtual instruments in my music folder. I will right click, cut, and to get to my music folder, I'm going to go to this PC, my C drive, users, select your username, and there is music. I'm going to go ahead and add this to the quick access menu there so I have easy access to it. Enter the folder, right click, new folder, and type samples. Of course, you can put this wherever you prefer, but this is where I'm putting it for this tutorial. And then paste it into that folder. Now go ahead and open the general user GS folder and inside is the general user GS sound font, some demo MIDI files. Let's open that real quick. So here are the MIDI files. There's also audio of those MIDI files created using FluidSynth, and these serve as a reference for uh, MIDI playback. So if you're testing general user GS out with other MIDI players, you can have a good comparison for what it should sound like. Then we also have documentation and support files. Go into documentation. This file list will look a little different upon final release, but you will have a readme.html. This is probably the best way to view the documentation. Double click on that, it should open in your preferred browser. Although if Microsoft has their way, it'll open in Edge. Within the table of contents, look for playing MIDI files and then the fluid synth section. Note that in future versions of this documentation, these numbers might change. Click FluidSynth, and then under installation, uh, for step one, we have downloading FluidSynth. There are three different ways to get FluidSynth on Windows that I'm aware of. One is just by downloading the latest release from the GitHub page. You can optionally install it using either the Chocolatey or Scoop package managers, with the Chocolatey install having some advantages over the other methods that I will cover later. For this tutorial, we're just going to download the latest version from GitHub and that link can be found here. As of the recording of this video, current FluidSynth version is 2.3.6, and the Windows executable we want is right here. Go back into your downloads folder, and we are once again going to extract the zip file. Right click, extract all, Delete the zip file, 
cut the fluid synth folder and move this into a more permanent location. Wherever you prefer to put your manually installed programs, I'm just going to use program files on the C drive. Paste it here. Give it administrative permission. And then I like to rename this folder um, just fluid synth. That way, if I update fluid synth in the future, the path to the files will always stay the same. Now, the next thing we need to do is configure fluid synth. Go back to the documentation that you have open in your browser. Scroll down to step three here, and you will see all of this text. These are the recommended configuration settings for fluid synth. Right click and copy that. And now open your favorite text editor. We'll just do notepad and paste that text into the editor. Now, before we save this, we need to actually set this to the correct path for the general user GS sound font. So go back into your file browser and wherever you placed general user GS for me music samples here. And then we have the sound font right here. Click within the path just to the right of all of the folder names. And now you can copy this file path. Right click, copy. Go back to the text editor and replace this path to and its slashes with the text you copied. And you'll need to add one more backslash here. And then just verify that this file name is identical to what you have. Uh, if you're using more updated documentation, it's possible that this file name might not match what you have here. So just double check that 2.0.0. That's all correct. And then just a brief rundown of some of these settings. This setting will tell FluidSynth to function as a Roland GS device. I find in my experience, better compatibility with MIDI files with this setting. I've increased the polyphony from the default of 256. If you're running on an old or slower computer and run into performance issues, you might want to drop that back down to 256. This sets the volume level, and then these settings have the most significant effect on the quality of fluid synth sound. The default reverb and chorus settings are not great with fluid synth. This will be changing in fluid synth 2.4, but for now, um, we will set new reverb and chorus settings that actually sound really nice. This last one here, um, set sample interpolation to the highest quality. Again, if you are on a older or slower system, you might want to eliminate this line. Now it's time to save this file. Go up to file, save, and this file needs to go into your user folder. So once again, we're gonna go to C drive, users, your username, and then we don't want it to save with a .txt extension. So just change this to all files. And then the name should be fluidsynth.cfg. Hit save. All right, so let's do a quick test to make sure FluidSynth is working and finding general user GS without issue. Open the command prompt. And now this is where things will be different depending on how you installed FluidSynth. If you installed using Chocolatey, you can just type FluidSynth and it will start the application. However, if you installed it through the zip file, you will need to provide the full path to FluidSynth.exe. So browse to where you installed FluidSynth. And go inside the bin folder. And here is fluidsynth.exe. So let's copy this path. We're going to add quotes and then control V to paste the path, or you can do it from here as well. Then do another backslash type fluidsynth.exe and hit a quote and then a space. And the reason for the space is we're going to drag a MIDI file in here and see if it plays. 
So back to general user GS folder, demo midis, and let's try this one. You can see now the MIDI files path is also in the command. Activate the terminal window and hit enter. All right, it's working. You can type quit to exit FluidSynth. And if you wanted to try another MIDI file, you can most easily do that by pressing the up arrow on your keyboard. And now you can see the uh, file paths are still here. We'll just delete this previous MIDI file here. And oops, don't forget the space. Add another one in here. All right, and same thing, type quit to exit, or you can just close the terminal window to exit, which I will do now anyway, because the next step is gonna to be to get this where you can just double click the MIDI file and have it open in FluidSynth. To do that is quite simple on Windows. Just right click a MIDI file, select open with, choose another app. Tick this box to always use this app to open .mid files, then click more apps, Scroll down, look for another app on this PC. Then browse to your FluidSynth folder, go inside bin and select fluidsynth.exe and click open. And just close the terminal window to stop playback. Note that some MIDI files might take a moment to get started. For example, Earth Day in particular, I know uh, takes like several seconds before it gets going. There's just lots of silence at the beginning of the MIDI file. So if you don't hear something right away, just wait a bit. Still waiting. There it goes. So there you have it. It's super easy to play MIDI files this way and you get the best possible playback quality. In the future, drumstick MIDI player might become an even slicker way to play MIDI files through FluidSynth. You'll have playback controls and a nice GUI to work with, but currently it has a few issues that keep me from recommending it at this time. I will update my documentation as things change, so keep an eye on my website for that. Until then, happy MIDI-ing and uh, hope you have a great day.